and you dwell on the past. And God wants to set you free this day because under the blood of Jesus, he can forgive all your past. And he's got some good news for you. You've got a future. In God, you've got a future. He's got a plan for your life which is good and acceptable and perfect. And this word, let it be like a shaft straight into your spirit. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Let him fill your vision. The future of the Church of Jesus Christ is glorious beyond description. It's like the burning bush. The church will shine with the glory of God. We will be a sign that people will turn aside to see. Because they will see the people of God living like God meant them to live. Amen. You've got a destiny. Amen. It's a God-given holy destiny. Young woman, God created you to be his servant Amen. and to walk the world in white. God sees you as something beautiful for God. Young man, God's got a plan for your life. Better than anything you could ever dream. I'm heartened that Christians in the UK are asking where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about because people are saying well he hasn't changed maybe we need to seek him it is time now yes. to seek the Lord mm -hmm. until he comes and showers righteousness upon us. Do you realize that the church, the body of Christ, is a miraculous entity? When you come together Sunday by Sunday, when you meet in this place, do you perceive the body of Christ? It's not just the same old crowd funny bunch of people who sing choruses and wave flags do you not perceive this is the body of Christ these are the people of God his people called by his name the people of God and people ask where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about? That Pentecostal outpouring at Azusa Street in LA. The golden days of the Keswick Convention in the Lake District. The Welsh Revival, the Hebridean Revival. Where now is the Lord God of Elijah? If the church isn't supernatural, Leonard Ravenhill has said she's superficial. Have you not a divine restlessness in you? You're being provoked by the Spirit of God. If we're not supernatural, we're superficial. God intends us to be a supernatural people. And God is still upholding all things by his powerful word. He's 
still working out his eternal purposes as year succeeds on year. He is still committed to ensuring that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God hasn't lost one ounce of commitment to that goal. It is written and the scripture cannot be broken. God doesn't need reviving. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. In Nahum chapter 1 and verse 5, it says this, The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Amos chapter 4 and verse 13. He who forms the mountains, creates the wind, and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns dawn to darkness, and treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God Almighty is his name. Psalm 104, verse 32. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. And Psalm 97 and verse 2. This is God, our God. Psalm 97, verse 2. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12. Talking about our God, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens, who has held the dust of the earth in a basket and weighed the mountains on the scales. What an amazing God. Here's the whole Atlas range in North Africa. And God just says, right, we'll pick them up and weigh them on the scales. Here's K2 and the Himalayas. And God says, right, we'll just pick them up and weigh them on the scales. What a mighty God we serve. Who has understood the mind of the Lord? or instructed him as his counsellor. Mm. 